looking at the suspected kill here. Um, the Diablo 3 footage, I recorded about an hour and a half today, so that should be, it's finishing compiling all the parts. The last part is actually being compiled right now during this. And during that time, I decided to finally watch the conclusion to Avid to the Legend of Korra, uh, the season one finale. May I say, excellent job on their part. They really went all out with this, uh, with this last episode. It really felt like a top notch episode. It, it's better than what you, what you see nowadays in my opinion. A lot of the shows don't do the way of the great feeling that this brings to the show. Um, also, this is going to be a spoiler type thing, so if you haven't seen it yet, watch my opinion on the stuff after you watch the episode. And I recommend you watch it. If you haven't watched Legend of Korra yet, sit down, take a day out, and just decide to watch the entire first season. It is worth it. And if you haven't seen Avatar, watch, uh, watch Avatar The Last Game Defender, then watch Korra. Things were said. Both are very good series. It's a very interesting way of American animation and drawing on from the ancient um, culture. Mostly so Japan, um, like you can see, the Fire Nation is taking a lot from from uh, Japanese culture, such as the architecture, which is kind of similar. That may also be from China. But you see more of it in Japan's um, temples and such like that. And like for example. Um, in the Legend of Korra, a really cool thing is that you can keep watching this. This is a good spoiler. I'm going to spoil probably, uh, let's say, 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Spoiler, so you can watch it minute. Like the Earth Kingdom, in my opinion, is, I guess you could say that may be more of China, because being a large territory, the Earth Kingdom, like, takes up, imagine the world is the globe, and it takes up, like, over more than half of it. Fire Nation is just Japan and a couple of outlying islands. Uh, the Water Tribe, which water benders, uh, North and South Pole, and the Airbenders, uh, which in the last Airbender they're all gone. They control mountaintops, living close to the sky, very monk-like. Um, they're they're very similar, to, I guess you could say, to uh, Buddhism and Hinduism, with the way of reaching enlightenment and becoming pure form. Sorry, the sun's setting in the background, so it's really funny. I'm so slow to right now. Um, I gotta say, it was really good. Um, probably my favorite part of the episode was near the end of it. Um, really, I really much enjoyed it and kind of reached me in the way of most shows don't. Like, this one has comedy and it also can fill a dark, but dark can be dark, but have a meaning to it. Such as when Amon, or I can't remember his real name, but basically with Amon and his brother Tarlock. So I just, yeah, I, that was um, something that I was hoping would actually be true. By the way. They've got to be brothers in the way of the father wants to control the city. Um, one brother tries to control it through doing this, and the other brother is taking the opposite action that the, uh, that the younger brother is. And I didn't know that they were the younger brother, Tarlock, was the more kind part of the fact that Tarlock basically takes the glove and ignites the fuel, which, yeah, and I don't think they survived that. I think they're basically the same. They're dead. Um, it's basically the fact that, um, that I didn't like Tarlock's character from the beginning. He was made, and he was, he was written in such a way that it's kind of like, I don't like this guy, I don't trust him. And in the end, it basically, basically makes you feel a sense of I don't know what it is. You look at sunlight and if it's in your eye, it starts to make the uh, the eye, which is closest to where the sun basically is, or farthest away, starts to water. I don't know. But Tarlock, the fact that he basically does as a self sacrifice in a sense, is his brother was turning, was turned into his father. His father was completely obsessed with revenge. He couldn't have anything but it. It fueled his entire rage when, uh, when Amon left, or whatever it's the camera. It's really complicated names to move on with our lives. It was a shorter, easy to go on. Same book. But he 
his brother was going to turn to his father and he was going to probably be fueled by revenge. And he saw that they were that he was going to go down the same path, so I think he wanted to prevent that. And wanted to give himself some um, some retribution, but um, he wanted to redeem himself in a sense for what he did and what he caused. By not stopping his brother, he felt by not going with his brother, he felt that um, <laughs> this fit. He felt that it was his fault that he had a turned over this way. In his mind, he felt that maybe if I'd gone with the mom, he wouldn't have turned into the Amon. Um, maybe if I'd gone with him, he wouldn't have been like this. And now he's going, now he's turning to my father. And I have to stop this blood thunder. I have to stop him before he does what he did to us, or if he tries to take over a public city again with this blood thunder. So he basically takes the blood and he takes the blood. It's very sad. Also, thought when I saw the mushroom, it's. It's a giant mushroom! I wonder if it's friendly! <laughs> Don't know if that's the exact one I'm talking about, but that's from uh, it was season two. Uh, uh, it's, it's a phrase that one of the soccer uses. He was one of my favorite characters in the comic book. Very well made. And the, the thing about this series is it started off slow, and I really didn't like the whole ending stuff. The romance was fun, because it's the way of, I, I know it's vital. Especially in the finale, to have romance, but it's seriously like, I guess if we think about it, it makes sense because the audience is older. They're making this series, The Legend of Horror, for. They're imagining when you watched The Last Airbender, you were a child. Like, let's say you're 12 when you watched The Last Airbender. That's three seasons. Um, so let's say uh, it's four years. It's, yeah, that probably makes sense. You're 16 now, 17, maybe even 15. You're older. Um, they decide we're going to make a new series, but we're going to make it more, more we're going to make it more adult oriented. That was perfect. They could have done the same thing and make it a really lighthearted series, but no, they made it really dark, especially with this thing. People were losing their bending more. As you find at the end, the Avatar can energy bend it back in. I never believed you could take it away in my opinion. It was always just stopping it, like drawing out from Naruto a way of chakra flowing through your body if you hit certain points, which Avatar also had that. You hit certain point, you turn off the chi, and you can't bend it. They took that Tai Li's ways and adapted it. I s still wish they had explained it more, but they're basically saying, well, just blood better, you can just take away your bending. Did he meet the spirit that taught him how to do this? How did he get burned? Did he steal food? Did he threaten the blood? The best thing that I'm thinking Furlock did, or not Charlotte, Amon, the best thing that I'm thinking Amon did to do this is he was trying to using bloodbending on family, and basically, uh, let's say the father burned his face, and he killed the entire family for that, and then basically said, oh, um, and they got through later on saying, now that I have this burn on my face, I can pretty much just prove that firebender is trying to do this, and that, yeah, basically he wanted to take over the world, that no one can bend, have no resistance, which means Bloodbending fully, you could take over the entire world. Take out the Avatar, entire world. I still believe, I was hoping they would have done that, but it makes more sense with the horror. The, the best part was seeing all the Avatars at the end. It was just really cool to see them all. This time they actually see them dressed in the ceremony thing. Like I saw a firebender that looked like um, one of the sages. Which is really cool. And all the various clothes that they wore. They, show the cultures that they bring within. And I'm really excited for the second season. I watched, um, I read a review of it on IGN, and you know, some of you are probably like, I can't even go to that. I go to the site for fun, but it's gaming news. So I check the site for gaming news. And it gave it a 10 out of 10, and I believe that score. It was a magnificent conclusion of season two. And I don't know what they're going to do with season two. Maybe Amon isn't dead. But I'm hoping he is, basically, so it doesn't make the life thing as we do. Maybe there's another crisis. Um, there's been fanfic written about Shadowland, in a sense. And that was on the wiki for a little bit, then it was deleted, so I don't know what Shadowland is. Maybe they may adapt that, maybe, maybe they may adapt something. Maybe one of the nations is trying to take over the world. Maybe the Earth came from that. I'm kind of doubting that. But, you know, 
never know. So, that was my opinion of the season finale of Let's Cora and what I felt it meant, the meanings, a lot of the stuff, the fact of taking away the bending from someone and making them normal in a sense, taking away the something that makes them special, was the great influence of that. And you've basically seen the beginning where Alon gets supported by taking out the mobs first. You notice that he doesn't attack regular citizens. If you just took on the street, kidnapped a bunch of citizens, and took away the bending forcibly, not mobsters who use the bending to hurt people, he would have gotten very little support and just been seen as a monster being like he's attacking innocent people, taking away their bending. These are innocent people that have done nothing to anyone else. Regular people like you or me just to get bent. And that's the brilliant way of Amon is when you think about it, Amon and Tarlock, Tarlock drew the thing of in World War Two, the Japanese, after the first after the Pearl Harbor attack, all the Japanese were rounded up and put into their internment camps, which were similar to the containment, which were similar to um Stiller's concentration camps, but they didn't have to leave they didn't have to leave. And Tarlock bounds up all the non vendors similar in that fashion. Or where basically Amon's stance is basically saying that non-vendors are the superior race, and that non and that uh, vendors are evil in a sense. He's acting a bit like Hitler. Amon is a name that I think they drew inspiration from one of Hitler's generals. I don't quote me on that, but it's something related to Hitler. One of his people they took that name from, and that's just brilliant how they use that real life event in this show to convey the meaning of the word. Um, I'm going to stop the video right here before I start to ramble on, but if I have any more ideas or anything to discuss, I'm going to